Welcome to Hot Topics. In this video, we're going to cover GFCI protection for receptacles in accordance with 210.8b, other than dwelling units, which is considered, you know, commercial and industrial type locations. Now, let's review 210.8b as in boy, and we're going to look at uh, these requirements 1 through 15. Now notice number two is new. Kitchens, that's been added in and it deals with the requirements if you have these receptacles located in a kitchen as defined in Article 100 of the NEC. And then of course we have uh, uh, item three uh, which is new and it deals with areas with sinks uh, and, uh, and permanent, I guess you could say, provisions for food preparation uh, beverage preparation or cooking and items like that. And then, of course, our number four. Uh, this uh, is new uh, also. Buffet serving areas with permanent provisions for food servicing and, you know, beverages servicing, cooking. About the same as uh, number three uh, is requiring uh, receptacles in these areas. And then, of course, we would uh, drop down to number seven, and that's new. Uh, crawl spaces, uh, uh, or excuse me, uh, when we uh, look at number 13, I, I picked up number 11. Number 13 is aquariums. Uh, it deals with uh, bait wells and uh, similar open vessels and containers. And notice again, you have a six foot rule there. And if you locate a receptacle within six foot, say from the inside realm of an aquarium, you have to GFCI protect it. So installers, if you don't want to have to provide GFCI protection or it's not required on the plans and so forth, uh, you don't want to install within six foot, see, that receptacle. Notice that six foot rule is in item seven. It's there also. And if you drop down to 13, the six foot rule is there. If you drop down to 15, the six foot rule uh, is there also. So now we're looking at B2, which is new, B3, uh, uh, which is new, B4, which is uh, new, uh, B7, uh, for six foot within uh, the location of a sink, if you install a receptacle, it has to be GFCI protected. So once again, keep those receptacles uh, over six foot from the sink, or you're going to have to GFCI protect them. And again, the plans may require them to be GFCI protected, so always look at that. And then, of course, the uh, final uh, uh, six-foot rule, you drop down to item 13. Now, notice items or exceptions 1 through 15 to 210.8b require GFCI protection under these conditions. Now, we want to look at our next illustration, uh, our uh, second uh, illustration, and we're going to deal with the six exceptions to the rule. Now, in uh, dealing uh, with these exceptions, and notice receptacles that are located on the roof, say, that are used for de-icing purposes in accordance with 426.28, they do not have to be GFCI protected. GFCI protection can be omitted, but you do have to provide ground fault protection of equipment in accordance with a manufacturer's instruction for such device, which is usually 30 to 50 milliamps, but 426.28 deals uh, with that type of installation. 427.22 now deals with the uh, ground fault protection of equipment in, uh, for vessels and pipelines and, and those areas. Now, when we look at the exception number two, receptacles located on the rooftop uh, uh, shall not be required to be read, except, uh, read accessible excuse me, except from the rooftop. Now, to me, that is a big clarification because in times past, uh, the authority having jurisdiction may say, when I read the accessible from the grade level, not the roof level. So this points out, no, it is from the rooftop where the receptacles install for servicing, say, the AC unit. 
So that's a big clarification, and that'll keep it, designing engineers, uh, installing electricians, working for contractors, and approving inspectors on the same page when exception two is uh, being applied. Now, exception number three deals uh, with the uh, six-foot rule from a sink. And if you locate it there, you know, you need to have GFCI protection. But it can be uh, omitted if a greater hazard should exist. And, of course, you can go over for the uh, approved electrical conductor program in 590.6B2. Now, most uh, electricians and contractors, they do not like to apply uh, this exception dealing with the approved electrical conductor program because there's a paper trail involved when you review OSHA 1910-304-B32IC. Uh, you would have to uh, provide all of those rules there, record keeping, documentation, uh, testing, and all that kind of thing. And OSHA usually levies fines. They'll levy a fine uh, if you don't uh, provide this proper record keeping and uh, testing and documentation that that section uh, requires. So uh, be careful exception number four when you use it. Then exception number five is healthcare facilities where you have category two general care, category one critical care, uh, and then you would uh, uh, look at the uh, section 517.21 uh, where it's required or not required, see. And then the exception number three deals with any kind of weight supporting item that may have a GFCI, well, not a GFCI, but a receptacle provided. And in that situation, if it's not readily accessible, uh, in my opinion, then your GFCI protection would not be required for such an item. Now, that's the application of your exceptions one through six and how they would be applied in accordance with 210.8b. Well, now, folks, as we said before, you pretty well have it there. If you like these videos, we'll hit that subscribe button and notification, and they'll come to you automatically. And if you don't mind me imposing on you, uh, if you like these videos, you think they'd be helpful to other folks, recommend them. I'd appreciate that. And uh, as I always say, my name is James Gray Stalkup, and... Uh, Thank you for watching this video.